Hello all, welcome to the Lobster's Voyage and welcome to KCET Series 1 Class 11 Biology. Part 1 and Part 2 of this video will be discussing some of the questions with respect to Unit 16 Digestion and Absorption. Before you watch this video, I insist you to go through the NCERT textbook for better explanation and better understanding. Let's solve the questions one by one. Here is the first question which says, select the mismatched between the secretions in the alimentary canal and their sources. So there are certain cells that are present in the alimentary canal and there are the secretions which are listed right next to it. We'll have to find out the mismatched pair. First option is auxentic cell which secretes vitamin B12. The second option parietal cell which secretes HCL. Third option which says neck cell which produce mucus. Fourth one panate cell which secretes sucus entericus. So sucus entericus or this panate cell, these cells are present in the crypts of small intestine. They are present in the crypts of small intestine. And they produce sucus entericus and which is also a lysozyme. Lysozyme that helps in the process of digestion. Whereas the next cells which are present in the alimentary canal, they produce mucus in order to avoid the process of auto digestion. The second option, parietal cells which are uh, a part of digestive cells or the digestive system which secretes HCL in order to digest the food even that option holds good whereas the first option looking into the word auxentic cell auxentic cell has got another name called as delomorphous cell delomorphous cell which is also called as parietal cell so the other name of auxentic cell is parietal cell and the parietal cell secretes HCL. So the first option which says auxentic cell secretes vitamin B12 is a wrong answer and this is the mismatched pair in the given question. Question 2. Wisdom tooth in human is the options are first option third molar and four in number second option third molar two in number third option second molar and four in number and fourth option second molar and two in number to answer this question we will have to understand the dentition formula in case of human beings human beings in total consists of 32 teeth and the teeth in the buccal cavity are divided into four quadrants divided into four quadrants the upper uh, upper two qu uh, quadrants forms the upper jaw and lower two quadrants forms the lower jaw and in each quadrant in each quadrant we are able to find incisors Canines, molar and premolar. In each quadrant, incisors are 2, canines 1, molar 3 and premolar 2. And the dental formula would be 2, 1, 3 2 upon 2 1 3 2 into 2 which is equal to 32 and the question is about the molar tooth or the wisdom tooth which are 3 in each quadrant each quadrant so 1 here 1 here 1 here 1 here so uh, in total there are they are four in number and the wisdom tooth is a third molar teeth in case of human beings the answer is very simple the wisdom tooth in in case of human being is a third molar teeth and they are four in number and each one is present in the each quadrant so the first option which says third molar and four in number is the correct answer 
for this question. Question number three. Smallest salivary gland is. The options are parotid, sublingual, infraorbital, submandibular. Salivary glands in case of human beings have three divisions. Three divisions out of which one is large, second one is little smaller in, when compared to the first gland and third is the smallest. The large one being the parotid gland. It is the largest salivary gland in case of human beings. Whereas, submandibular gland, submandibular gland stands next to parotid gland with respect to the size. Whereas, the smallest one is nothing but the sublingual gland. And we have got one more option, option number three, which says infraorbital. So, infraorbital is nothing but it is an additional salivary. It is additional salivary gland, salivary gland that is present in only cats. This is seen only in case of cats, whereas parotid gland, sublingual gland and submandibular gland are seen in case of human being. So, the, the smallest out of all these four options is the sublingual gland next to it is the submandibular gland next to it is the parotid gland but additional salivary gland that is present only in case of cats is infraorbital gland question number four the pulp cavity is lined by basically the pulp cavity is seen uh, in, in the tooth region where the tooth is attached that socket is uh, uh, called as pulp cavity and they are asking about the type of cells that are lined in the tooth socket or the pulp cavity and options are option number one osteoblast option number two ameloblast option number three odontoblast and option number four chondroblast see blasts are nothing but cells and these cells are different in origin option number one osteoblast when you look at the word osteo, which means bones, so these are the cells that are present in the bones. So, this option cannot be the right answer. Second option uh, is amyloblast. See, amyloblast is nothing, uh, is a type of cell that secretes enamel of the teeth. Enamel is nothing but uh, uh, the outer protective membrane or outer protective coating on the teeth. That's called as enamel. And amyloblasts are the cells that are secreting these enamel substances. And the option number four, which, are, which says chondroblast, these are the ones that are present in the cartilage. So, the remaining option is odontoblast, which are the, uh, uh, which are the one which are present in the pulp cavity of the teeth. Question number five, which of the following is not component of saliva and the options are option number one saliva contains electrolyte electrolytes like sodium potassium chlorine hco3 ions option number two talin or alpha salivary amylase option number three mucin lysozyme and theocyanate ions option number four anti bodies that is igg so this question they have focused on the components of saliva saliva basically contains some of the electrolytes due to which saliva is slightly 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 uh, 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 varies in ph with respect to water the presence of ion in saliva is mandatory and the first option which says saliva contains certain electrolytes like sodium potassium chlorine and bicarbonate ions it's absolutely correct answer and second option Talin or alpha salivary amylase. It is the vital component of saliva which helps in the, in the process of digestion of some of the uh, components that we feed on. 
the third option says mucin lysozyme and thiocyanate ions these are another essential elements of the digestion which are the components of saliva whereas option number four antibody igg so this is with respect to the immune system of the body immune system so these are immunoglobulins and they are nowhere in relation with the saliva of the body they are present in the blood and the lymphatic system of the body therefore it is not a, a component of saliva so the last option option number four is not a component of saliva Question number six, which reads, if for some reason the parietal cells of the gut epithelium becomes partially non-functional, what is likely to happen? So, if in case the parietal cells of the gut or the stomach region, if they fail, what is likely to hap happen is the uh, intention of this question and the options are, the first option, the pancreatic enzymes, especially the trypsin and lipase will not work efficiently. The second option the pH of the stomach will fall abruptly. Third one, proteins will not be adequately hydrolyzed by pepsin into proteases and peptones. And fourth one, fourth option, steps in will be more effective. So, what happens when the parietal cells of the stomach fail? And when you look at uh, uh, the first option, the pancreatic enzyme. So, the pancreatic enzyme is something that is secreted by the pancreas of the body. It is not secreted by the parietal cell and therefore, it has no function to do with trypsin and lipase. So, the first option is absolutely a uh, uh, wrong option for this question. And the second option says the pH of the stomach will fall abruptly. So, the parietal cell basically, they secrete HCl. So, HCl uh, is a substance which is acidic in nature and due to its secretion in the pH scale, obviously the uh, pH would fall down on proper secretion. But if at all they are not being secreted, uh, the pH would not fall, rather it would raise. That means the stomach would become alkaline in nature. Even the second option is not correct in respect of this question. The fourth option, stepacin will be more effective. See, my dear uh, uh, listeners, this stepacin is another component that is produced by pancreas, not by the uh, parietal cells of the stomach. Uh, other name of this stepacin is lipase. Lipase. So, this is nowhere related to the gut region of the human body or any mammal for that matter. Looking into option number 3, protein will not be adequately hydrolyzed by pepsin into proteases and peptone. So, this would definitely happen because the proteins will not be hydrolyzed. That means the protein would not be broken down into substituent components in the absence of HCl uh, which was being produced by the parietal cell. So, option 3 proteins will not be adequately hydrolyzed by pepsin into proteases and peptone is the correct answer for this question. Question number 7 says, tongue is attached to the floor of buccal cavity by. So, this question speaks about the attachment of the tongue to the buccal cavity and they are asking like to, by what connection the tongue is attached to the floor of buccal cavity and the first option is frenulum second option is mesentery third option is lingual papilla and the fourth option is falciform ligament so the first of uh, uh, let's look into the option number two which says mesentery so, mesentery is uh, a kind of connection that exists between the intestine, intestine and stomach. It's a kind of connection that exists between the intestine, uh, a small intestine and the stomach. And option number three, lingual papilla. Lingual papilla is nothing but its rough cells which are present on, which are found on the tongue 
so the rough cells whenever we rub our tongue we feel little rough nature uh, on the tongue that's because of the presence of lingual papilla so it's not something that helps in the process of connection the fourth option falciform ligament falciform ligament is a kind of a ligament that helps in attachment of liver and abdomen liver and abdomen so it is the connection between the abdomen and the liver whereas the first option frenulum is the correct answer that is the tongue is attached to the floor of buccal cavity by a by a, a sub, substance called as frenulum this frenulum helps in attachment of tongue firm holding of tongue to the buccal cavity question number 8 which reads in human the number of deciduous teeth is option 1 12 option 2 20 option 3 10 and option 4 8 to solve this question we need to understand this terminology called deciduous teeth which is nothing but the milk teeth so milk teeth is a set of teeth uh, that's uh, th that usually human beings possess before the state of maturation and usually milk teeth will not have a set a set of teeth called as premolar so premolar are completely absent in the milk teeth so the human beings during the milk teeth condition will have incisors will have canines and will have molars incisors would uh, would be two in number canines would be one in number and the molars would be again two in number so the dental formula would be 212 by 212 into two sets that is nothing but 20 so uh, like do you find any option which says 20 yeah option number 2 uh, which says in the human being the number of deciduous teeth or the milk teeth is 20 by the simple calculation we can solve this problem question number 9 choose the wrong statement first statement all the four basic layers in the wall of the gut never show modification in different parts of alimentary canal option number 2 mucosal epithelium has goblet cells which secrete mucus and help in lubrication option number 3 cells lining the villi has brush border or microvilli option number 4 mucus sorry mucosa forms gastric gland in the stomach and crypts in between the bases of villi in the intestine option number 4 which says mucus forms gastric glands in stomach and crypts in case of uh, crypts in between the bases of villi and intestine this is absolutely correct this is how the inner membrane or the inner wall of the intestine appears to be like so this option is absolutely correct statement so option number 3 cells lining the villi have brush border or microvilli they are uh, that's the correct answer again they are highly absorptive in nature they absorb all the essential components that are uh, 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 that are associated with the villi in the intestinal region of the human digestive system option number 2 mucosal epithelium has got goblet cells which secretes mucus and helps in the process of lubrication see these goblet cells basically they can also be called as defense cell or the protective cell which helps uh, the stomach to avoid the concept of auto digestion so by the process of secretion of mucus the mucus would be deposited on the wall of the stomach Uh, uh and this helps in uh, hcl uh, uh not being in direct contact with the stomach therefore it prevents the inner layer or inner wall of the stomach whereas the first option which says all four basic layers in the wall of the gut never show any modification in different parts of alimentary canal so what are the four basic layers it is they are mucosa sub mucosa muscularis and serosa when you look at the shape of muscle mucosa sub mucosa muscularis and serosa in the gut region 
and in the intestinal region they are completely different so like uh, like in some regions where uh, the blood connect connections are more required the serosa will be dense whereas in some some regions serosa will be lighter in nature and sometimes sub mucosa will have glands associated uh, in in it and sometimes the glands are not seen so the four layers mucosa submucosa muscularis and serosa they are not same throughout the alimentary canal they change depending upon the organ and their function in the body so the first option which says all four basic layers in the wall of the gut never show modification in different parts of the alimentary canal is the wrong option the correct answer is they show modification and it is different from different organs in the alimentary canal the question number 10 which says which of the following statements are incorrect option number one chylomicrons are released from epithelial cells into the la uh, lacteals second option lac chylomicrons are produced in the epithelial cells of small intestine third option chylomicrons contain triglycerides cholesterol and phospholipids to solve this question one has to know what exactly is chylomicron chylomicrons are nothing but simple drop drops of fat they are the drops or the droplets of fats so when we hear the word when we hear the word uh, fats uh, they have or rather they are made up of triglycerides cholesterol and phospholipids they are one and the other form of the fats so option number th uh, three is definitely a correct statement which means chylomicrons contains triglycerides cholesterol and phospholipids yes absolutely because chylomicrons are nothing but fats and fats all these three constitute fats second option chylomicrons are produced in the epithelial cells of small intestine yes definitely small intestine has got epithelial cells which are secretory in nature and they are the one which secretes these droplets of fats first option which reads chylomicrons are released into the epithelial cells into the lacteals so where are these lacteals what are these lacteals lacteals are nothing but the lymphatic vessels lymphatic vessels of small intestine so these chylomicrons they are released into into from the epithelial cells of small intest uh, from the lymphatic vessels of small intestine obviously small intestine is the region which is producing the chylomicron uh, and it is releasing uh, it is being released into the lymphatic vessels or the lymphatic system of the body so option number one option number two option number three all are correct and the option number four which says none of the above is the wrong answer for this question question 11 reverse flow of food from small intestine into the stomach of the man is prevented by option number one vulva option number two pyloric sprinter option number three ilio cecal uh, wall option number four cardiac sprinter so we will have to uh, take the correct option about a, a, a wall that prevents the re-entry of the food into the stomach from the intestine so looking into the option option number one uh, vulva vulva is nothing but a soft pellet of the throat it is the soft pellet of throat sometimes it is wrongly called as small tongue when you stretch your mouth above the tongue region you can find a small flap like structure which is soft in nature that is attached to the throat region of the human being or any mammal that is nothing but the vulva whereas the second option pyloric sprinter let's come to this option a little later the third option ileocecal valve 
Iliocecal wall is a wall that is present in between the intestine, the large intestine and the colon. So, it is the wall that is present between the large intestine and the colon which prevents the re-entry of the substances from colon into the large intestine and this is not something that is present in between the stomach and intestine. So, this cannot, this cannot be the right answer. This is the wrong answer. The fourth option, cardiac sprinter. When you hear the word cardiac, few people confuse it with the heart. It is not something that is present in the heart. Rather, it is something that is present between esophagus esophagus and the stomach. So, it is a wall that is present between the esophagus and stomach which prevents the entry of the food from stomach back into the esophagus and the remaining option is the pyloric sprinter. This is the sprinter or this is the correct option which is present in between the intestine and the stomach which prevents the re-entry of food into the stomach from the intestine. So, option number 2 pyloric sprinter is the correct answer for question 11. Question 12, which of the following is false about the small intestine? So, this question is about the uh, small intestine and we will have to find out the false statement, false statement in the small intestine and the options are, option number 1, site of majority of water reabsorption in the gastrointestinal tract this is absolutely correct it is a site of majority of reabsorption of the water that is being entered into the digestive system the second option it is the site of carbohydrate protein and the fat digestion so uh, uh, the small intestine is the place where several hormones enzymes are secreted which aid in the process of carbohydrate, protein and the fat digestion. Even this answer is absolutely correct. And the fourth option, this is the site of most rapid absorption of galactose. Galactose is ab actively absorbed by the small intestine which has got uh, microvilli lined within it and this is helpful in the process of absorption of essential components like galactose. Uh, galactose. Whereas the third option, the first site of protein hydrolysis, the first site of protein hydrolysis is always uh, the stomach. St hydrolysis is nothing but the process of breaking down, breaking down the complex protein into uh, uh, respective components. So the proteins are broken down. So the proteins are broken down into uh, uh, respect, uh, respective components by the action of pepsin and proteases. Pepsin and proteases together act upon protein and they break the proteins into smaller components and this happens in the stomach region not in the small intestine. So option number 3 uh, which says the first site of protein hydrolysis is the wrong option for question number 12. Question 13, the mucosal layer in the stomach form irregular folds known as option number 1, rugae, option number 2, villi, option number 3, lumen, option number 4, crypts of Leberquin. So, option number 4, crypts of Leberquin, they are the tubular glands, they are tubular glands which are present between the villi, which are present between two successive villi in small intestine in the small intestine so in the intestine we have got something so a, 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 a projections that are present in the intestine they are called as villi and these scripts of labor kun are something that exists between two successive microvilli so they are the one that exists between two successive microvilli and they are not the one uh, which are present in the stomach rather they are present in the small intestine so this cannot be the answer lumen is nothing but the space hollow space that is available for filling of any component in the body and this is also uh, not the correct answer for this question and willy as we uh, saw in the option number four they, that is present in the small intestine and rugae rugae is nothing but irregular fold of 
stomach. So when you look at the cross section of the stomach, you will have large depression, uh, a steeper depression and these depressions are called as rugae and they are irregular in shape and they are irregularly folded. So the muscle, so the mucosal layer in the stomach that forms the uh, irregular folds are rugae. Option number one. Question 14. Identify the incorrect statement. The first statement is goblet cells secrete mucus in the digestive tract. Second one, bile salts contain sodium carbonate, sodium glycolate and sodium toroclate. And option number three, sphincter of Audi surrounds the opening of the bile duct before it, it is joined with the pancreatic duct. Option number 4, liver synthesize urea from ammonia and carbon dioxide. So, uh, we will have to find out the incorrect statement uh, in these four options. First option, goblet cells secrete mucus in the digestive tract. Yes, goblet cells are the one which secretes mucus that helps in uh, the process of preventing auto digestion in the stomach region. Second option, bile salts contain the carbonates, glycolates and toroclates. This is absolutely correct answer which helps in the process of digestion. So, these uh, salts help in the process of digesting some of the harder components. Option number 4, liver synthesize urea from ammonia and carbon dioxide. This is called as urea cycle. Urea cycle happens in two regions. One is liver and second one is muscle. And the fourth option which says liver synthesizes urea. Absolutely correct answer. Whereas option number three, sphincter of Audi surrounds the opening of the bile duct before it joins with pancreatic duct. This is a, a absolutely wrong answer. So, what is the correct answer? Sprinter of Audi. Sprinter is nothing but a, a flap like structure that surrounds the opening. It is not the opening that surrounds the end portion of the bile duct. Th that surrounds the end portion of the bile duct and the pancreas uh, uh, and before it joins with the pancreatic duct. So, if the, if the third sentence, it ha, if it has to be correct, it would have been written in this way, which reads, sphincter of Audi surrounds the end portion of the bile duct before it joins with the pancreatic duct. But in the original option, it is written as opening of the bile duct. This is absolutely wrong answer. And option number three is incorrect out of four options listed in this question. Question 15. Each of the following statement about Brunner's gland is correct except option 1, they lie in the submucosal layer, option 2, they empty their secretions into the crypts of Leberkun, option 3, they are characteristic components of duodenal wall, option 4, they produce a serious secretion rich in digestive enzymes. So, to, uh, to solve this question or to understand this question, we will have to see where exactly this Brunner's gland is present. Is it present in the stomach? Is it present in the intestine? Uh, Brunner's gland is actually a gland that is present in the submucosa, submucosa of duodenum. It is present in the submucosal layer of the du duodenum and this is secretive in function. Let us look into the option. The first option says, first option says they lie in the submucosal layer. Yeah, they have not spe specified about the duodenum rather, uh, it, but that is absolutely fine because they have mentioned about the submucosal layer. Yeah, Brunner's glands, glands are present in the submucosal layer. The second option, they empty their secretions in the crypts of Leberkund. That is also absolutely correct option. Option number three, they are the characteristic components of the duodenal wall. 
So uh, in the first option, it just says that it is present in the submucosal layer, and then the third option it says that it is present in the duodenal wall or it is a characteristic component of the duodenal wall. Even that option is absolutely correct. They uh, and option number four says they produce serous secretion rich in digestive enzyme. So this is not correct answer. They secrete something called as alkaline fluid. They secrete something called as alkaline fluid and this alkaline fluid is called as mucin. So mucin is a substance that is secreted by the Brunner's gland and uh, uh, this mucin is actually protective in nature or protective in function. This protects the mucosa. This uh, mucin is a chemical substance that protects the mucosal layer. Uh, therefore, option number 4 is the wrong option which says it secretes digestive enzymes. Question number 16 reads, what happens when we consume food rich in wheat flour? Wheat is a plant substance, so the component that wheat would have stored in it uh, would be starch and the options are action of talin on starch is enhanced. Option number 2, action of talin on starch is reduced. Option number 3, action of talin on starch is affected. Option number 4, uh, four action of talin on starch stops. So, the, uh, when we consume more and more wheat substances, wheat flour in the, in the form of chapati or something like that, what happens? What happens is the actual question and look at the, uh, looking into the option. Option number 4 says, uh, action of talin on starch stops. So, uh, talin is nothing but uh, it is a form of salivary amylase. Salivary amylase. It is alpha salivary amylase uh, that is helpful in the process of digestion of several carbohydrates and starch is also a form of carbohydrate. And option number 4 says action of talin on starch stops. If at all the action on the, uh, on the starch stops, how will it be digested? That digestion process is, isn't possible. Therefore, option number 4 cannot be correct. Option number 3 says, action of talin on the starch is affected. In what term? What is the meaning of affected? What is the meaning of being affected? This sentence, sentence doesn't make any sense at all. Option number 3, sorry, option number 2, action of ta uh, talin on starch is reduced. If its action on the starch uh, is reduced, again digestion wouldn't happen properly. There will be something called as indigestion. So, option number 2 also cannot be the right answer. Whereas the first option which reads, talin on starch action is enhanced. That is, the action of the talin on starch is enhanced. Obviously, what happens when we consume more and more wheat product? More and more salivary amylase is uh, secreted in the body which directly go and act upon the carbohydrates that are present uh, that breaks the carbohydrate starch into substituent component and that eases the process of digestion. So, option number 1 which says action of talin on the starch is enhanced. That's the correct option. Question 17. The digestive glands associated with the small intestine include. So, the options are salivary glands, gastric glands, liver, pancreas and Brunner's glands. This question, the intention of this question is about the glands that are in connection with the small intestine. So, these glands, they are not just helpful in the process of digesting the food in the stomach. Rather, they, help, they are helpful also in the process of absorption in the small intestine, which are those glands. First one, salivary gland. Salivary gland produces saliva that is helpful in the process of digestion alone, that is never helpful in the process of absorption. The second uh, option is gastric gland that again produces gastric juice, pepsin, trypsin, HCL, even they are helpful in breaking the complex components into smaller component, uh, components but 
they are never helpful in the process of absorption in the small intestine. So option number two cannot be the right answer. Wherein the third one, third gland called as uh, liver which secretes bile juice that is helpful in both digestion as well as uh, in the small intestine which is helpful in uh, absorption. Uh, the pancreas what, which produce pancreatic juice which is associated with both the digestive glands and the intestinal glands. And the fourth one, Brunner's gland, which is associated in the submucosa. Submucosa is seen, uh, uh, is seen in both small intestine as well as digestion. Therefore, liver, pancreas and Brunner's glands are the glands that are associated with both the digestive system and the uh, absorption system that is the intestinal system. Option number one, which has got a third, fourth and fifth being correct is the correct answer for this question. Question number 18, a very simple question. Food is kept as a reserve in certain organs, which is the correct or organ. So, the food is stored in the body as a reserve material and we will have to uh, correct take the option in which the food is stored. Options are liver, brain, kidney and spleen. Spleen is a site of recycling of RBC. It is called as graveyard of RBC. It is a site or it is a gland where the RBCs, old RBCs are broken down into heme and globin and it never acts as a storage organ. So, spleen is not the correct answer. Kidney, the kidney is a glandular structure which is helpful in the process of filtration. Filtration, but never in the process of storing. Kidney never stores anything. Second option, brain. Brain is actually the central unit of the nervous system which helps in the controlling and coordination of the entire body. But brain never stores any food. It would store certain proteins which are called as memory proteins that are helpful in process of recapture, uh, recapturing the things but it never stores any food. So, the brain cannot be the correct answer. So, option number one, liver. Liver is the site of storage of several components. Some of the components that are absorbed in the process of digestion are stored and whenever they are in need the body retrieves from the liver. So, liver is the storage organ which stores some of the vital components of the body that are absorbed from the food. Question number 19. Which of the following component is associated with the bile? And the options are digestive action of pancreatic amylase. Option number two, digestion of proteins into amino acids. Option number three, emulsification of fats into tiny globules in the small intestine. Option four, emulsif uh, emulsification of fats into tiny globules in the stomach. Which uh, The question which is about the bile juice. So, bile juice is a, a secretion or it is a substance that is secreted from the liver. So, liver secretes bile juice, liver is produced, uh, liver produces bile juice and it transports the components into gall bladder, gall bladder, gall bladder stores bile juice whereas liver secretes bile juice. So, the major function of this bile juice is it helps in uh, the, uh, the breaking down, it helps in the process of breaking down of fats into fatty acids. Fats into fatty acids. So, bile juice is secreted by liver and is, it is stored in the gall bladder and the major function of the bile is to break down the fats into fatty acids. So, uh, now looking into the option, uh, uh, Option number one says digestive action of the pancreatic amylase. So, this is not the correct answer. Option number two, 
digestion of proteins into amino acids as we uh, just now saw the function it helps in the process of fats not in the uh, not about the proteins so the protein breakdown doesn't happen just because of the bile juice option number 3 emulsification of fats into tiny globules in the small intestine that the me the meaning of this statement is the fats are broken down into smaller pieces that happens in the small intestine and this is the correct answer and the fourth 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 option emulsification of fats into tiny globules in the stomach this doesn't happen in the stomach rather it happens in the small intestine because a small intestine is something that is in direct connection with the gall bladder the gall bladder transports the bile juice into the intestine where the fats are broken down into fatty acids so option number 3 emulsification of fats into tiny globules in the small intestine this is the correct uh, component that is associated with the bile juice question 20 which of the following statement is incorrect so we'll have to find out the incorrect statement in these following four statements the first statement is feces is temporarily stored in the rectum till defecation option 2 the activities of the gastrointestinal tract are only under the neural control option 3 simple substances formed due to breakdown of bio biomacromolecules are absorbed in the jejunum and ileum region of the small intestine option number 4 absorption of some water mineral and certain drug occurs in the large intestine so before we analyze each point let us see the option number 2 and let's read it again the activities of the gastrointestinal tract are only under the neural control emphasize on the word only basically basically the gastrointestinal activities are under the control of brain and endocrine system endocrine system what does brain do brain helps in creating the situation like hunger and satiety a, a, a state of satisfaction and also a state of uh, hunger that is being created by the brain by the action of the uh, uh, new, uh, neurons at the same time the endocrine system endocrine system helps in the process of production of hormones and enzymes hormones and enzymes these two in association with each other play vital role in the process of gas uh, digest, digestion and the gastrointestinal tract is something that is associated with the process of digestion in the body so the activity of the gi tract or the gastrointestinal tract are only under the neuronal control or the neural control is the wrong option they are under the control of both the brain and the endocrine system of the body whereas the other option first one feces is temporarily stored in the rectum till def defecation this is correct answer simple substances formed due to breakdown of bio macromolecules are absorbed in the jejunum and ileum regions of the small intestine you have got they have got microvilli and they absorb vital components or most of the components that are broken down fourth one absorption of some water minerals and certain drugs occurs in large intestine L large intestine is a final step in the process of digestion which absorbs maximum and which creates uh, feces which is very less in water therefore option number 4 is absolutely correct only option number 2 is wrong in the following statements those were the 20 questions don't forget to watch the part 2 of the same series wherein we'll be discussing the later half of the questions and thank you for watching kindly like share and subscribe